Live from San Francisco, California, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering DockerCon 2015. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media, with special thanks to Docker. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in San Francisco for DockerCon 2015. This is SiliconANGLE's theCUBE, our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm Joe my co-host Jeff Frick. Here, our next guest is Mariana Tessel, VP of Engineering at Docker, formerly of VMware. Um, great to see you. Welcome thank to theCUBE. Well, thank you. Glad to be here. So, VP of Engineering at a company that does all its engineering in the open is a, is a challenge. I can only imagine like herding the cats, as they say, but, but uh, Docker, obviously, super exciting technology. Um, opening up, being decomposed with some announcements here, plumbing and all this container stuff is the rage. Um, tell us how you got there. I mean, you, was it something you saw early on and how did you get to Docker and what made you go, wow, this is really worth you know, being part of this company? Right, so, um, um, you know, like, uh, I did see Docker a bit early on and partially it's because I was at uh, VMware and uh, as you talking to customers and seeing what customers do, uh, the Docker name suspiciously came up again and again and again as a technology they um, explore, they uh, uh, think about, they um, you know look at. So I was like, oh, that's an interesting, uh, an interesting name. Uh, I remember that. And when I was ready to um, go back into a bit of a startup, um, um, Docker was uh, was actually uh, an obvious choice. I want to say customer driven. You saw the feedback from the customers. I you could see the pool. You could see the pool. Like yeah. you totally. Uh, again, like you, being in the community, you hear like sometimes you hear a name again and again and again from ecosystem, from customers. Yeah. So you, you could understand and then you something the is dots. there. Jerry Chen was kind of sniffing around. Was he invested at that point? Or was he already invested or not? Uh, yeah, he so was he already, already put his first money in. He was already yeah. investor. Yeah, and we know we talked to Jerry before he did the investment and we could see where he's, the dots were connecting. Certainly a good call. Um, as a VP of engineering, what's it like there? Because you know, normally in a big company or startup, build the product, ship it, ship it, ship it, but now it's very collaborative. Open source is now the new normal. People use open source, it's very collaborative. This community is very balanced, There's a lot of self-governing going on. Um, certainly people still complain, of course, uh, but there's a, there's a community aspect. So how do you run engineering at Docker when you have a lot of people that don't work for Docker right. still you know, ship the code. I mean, how's that all working from your standpoint? Yeah, first of all, honestly, running um, engineering at Docker is absolutely amazing because uh, you know, it's a forefront of a technology, pushing the envelope, all of these great things, fast moving, all the great things that the engineering leader you, you look for. But you know, specifically to your question, on kind of this open source and community. We do have a vast, vast community. In fact, we have more people outside of Docker contributing to Docker than people inside the company, so it's, it's uh, quite amazing. It does bring it, so with, with it uh, some uh, great things and also some, uh, some challenges, so uh, as, as you can uh, imagine, but it's, it's really this kind of energy you get from uh, the community and the contributors and all that is 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 amazing. Just to give like one example, we have uh, launched this uh, uh, project called Catmatic that's designed for users to very easily UI driven uh, get uh, started with Docker. And you know we had in our roadmap this plan to do Windows next. And uh, shortly after we launched Catmatic, we woke up. Blah, the community had contributed. <laughs> Somebody. Uh, pretty much got us all the way uh, there, and it just took uh, a little work to get it done. So it's like a genie with the three wishes. You rub the bottle, and magic comes out. Uh, the community, in this case, the Windows version, right? Right, yeah. right. I mean, it's sometimes you don't have to even rub the bottle, so because they because they're like ahead of you to yeah. think about the next thing before you even thought about it. So. But then you've got to think about apps versus the platform and the connector. So it's really a an interesting community that you've got to support. Choose which pieces you're going to build and then also how you're going to create this great foundation for other people to more easily contribute. So how do you, it must just be a constant kind of balancing act, and as you just stated in that example, reshuffling uh, of where you think that your priorities are. Yeah, yeah, so it's, um, like I said, it could be, could be also a challenge, not, uh, it happens sometimes where uh, somebody gets frustrated because they 
um, we didn't get merged there, PR. And on the other hand, we look at it and say, oh, you just like gave us this, this actually pretty uh, big uh, piece of code and it's pretty fundamental and we want to have uh, this dialogue first. And even internally between teams when we want to, uh, you know, do something that has to do with the engine and um, uh, let's say um, get code that, that impact that. We sometimes run uh, across that as well because we're like, oh, we have this new thing and we want the engine to use it. Um, and uh, you know they're like, whoa, you know, it's big. We need to know ahead of time. Let's let's kind of uh, we should have talked. We should have planned. Um, not like necessarily best practice. So you know even internally we we see that as yeah. different teams try to contribute to each other, but definitely externally um, sometimes. Uh, you know, we get a PR, we get surprised. It's good surprise, but sometimes it's like, wow, it's too big. You right, know, we right, need to we right. need to work together on this. So it, it does it does happen. So Solomon talked about the APIs, and we had other customers on talking about obviously the success they've had over the years, and also the scar tissue from experimentation and kind of brute force. So as a monolithic code base, the natural thing would be to create more decomposed elements kind of the Lego blocks, as Solomon says. Right, right. What's your priority on that as an engineering manager? Do you guys sit in a room and say, okay, this is, we want to make it as modular as possible? Um, and, and what are those priorities? Can you share um, the engineering priorities relative to the making it less friction, uh, less fr more frictionless, if you will, to Yeah, you know, scale? I'm glad you mentioned the APIs because, you know, it is uh, one way that we allow uh, people to contribute, not necessarily even in an open source, uh, not necessarily for open source companies, but to just say, hey, we have a, a module or something that we want to connect to um, to Docker, allow us a way to do that, and this whole plugin API system is there that you can easily um, plug into that, and like you mentioned, this component, plumbing, is also there, so you can contribute to that easily, and you can uh, build around it, um, so that's kind of, um, um, the ideas, and now I'm blanking on your question. Uh, oh, the John. decomposition around the, the modularity of yeah, the, how priority. On the monolithic Got and it. the top yes. priorities. Yes, yeah. so it is absolutely a priority for us. As you could see, we uh, went forward with Run C, which is uh, a big step for us, and Notary is another thing we announced. Is Run C the plugin or the host compatibility? Run C, Run -C is, is, is this plumbing component. Okay, got it, okay. It, that you can build around um, and not is another the security plumbing component that you can build around. But this whole idea, th this whole pluggability, um, there's a couple of things, right? Pluggability and APIs, and the other one, uh, breaking down to the plumbing components, is, is is a huge priority for us. Uh, and we are absolutely pushing pushing this forward. And you know, our yeah. e our ecosystem and other contributors help as well because they're interested in that as well. It's a nice balance between the ecosystem. So I got to ask you the question. So we were we reported earlier the top big big three big things from DockerCon: the open container standard, cross host networking, and the Docker plugins. Of those three, what's your favorite? Oh wow! So you're, you're really like you know. It's like picking like your favorite child. You right? can't exactly. No, they're all like, you know, no, no, like favorite. You know, <laughs> I, you know let, let me yeah. let me kind of say maybe uh, from the engineering standpoint, I would say maybe the networking one, the multi-host, yeah. uh, just because it's just it's really, meaty. It's got it's meaty and it's really meaty for users. It's real. Yeah. It's uh, really expand the use case of Docker. Uh, and you know, we just got so much um, ask from from users to provide something like that, and it's kind of neat that it comes out with uh, APIs and already working with uh, companies um, around us to to provide yeah. the plugins. So yeah, I mean, I, I just yeah. think it's real it's world. I mean, the others the are, are cool too. I mean, yeah, how well, can I compete? Yeah, it's more standards. It's more, it's more business policy. The foundation is like yeah. this, this Politics. big. Yeah, no, love. It's important. Know, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, all I call the good. Woodstock of uh, of tech. <laughs> yes, the, the yes. Free love and a lot of, a lot of Kool Aid. I say <laughs> yes. Kool Aid in yeah. quotes, not no. really Kool Aid. That's important too. That's important too, right? Having a standard, you know, that that. standards are critical because you got to go fast. So that brings up my next question. If you look at the numbers, uh, Amazon is posting big numbers. The cloud game is decided; it's happening. This, these waves are coming; it's inevitable. And the companies that are on cloud are going to win. The ones that aren't are going to lose faster than than the ones that are winning. So I got to ask you, architecturally, from an engineering standpoint, what do you see as the most fundamental architectural change in cloud? 
that's happening now that's going to create a lot this begin this beginning revolution of, of real cloud computing uh, is it is it the the infrastructure is it the DevOps layer what's your thoughts just kind of as an industry participant what's the big architectural shift that's happening right now in the industry yeah I mean everybody are talking about um, microservices and and you know um, theoretically if you do it right they're they're going to have a couple of attributes, right? One is that um, they, um, you could put them in different places so you, so you no longer can need to think about your app as runs in a particular place and that's just one place and that kind of uh, ability to break it down to components that maybe one of them runs here, another one runs there is, is, is uh, interesting. Another attribute is the portability and the idea of like I started from a a workload in my laptop, then I want to test it in, in the cloud, I actually want to host it in production. All of that just allows the, the new creation of apps and the fluidity between uh, those different uh, formats, like the hybrid, the true like hybrid cloud vision. So I think that's probably yeah. what accelerates um, a lot of it. Uh, what quite about a the bit. legacy network stuff? I mean, just kind of just brainstorming here with you is that I look at the market like the Cisco's of the world, the Aristas, they're all networking guys. SDN has a lot of promise. I mean, this year is now VMware. That just stuff seems to be. It needs to go away in the mind of the developer, right? That's the goal of DevOps, is to make programmable infrastructure. So how does that happen and as, as, as we move forward in the Docker revolution? How does that, from a developer standpoint, just take care of itself? Kind of stay under the hood, if you will. Right, right, so from a developer point of view, they don't want to bother with like provisioning, yeah. network, and understanding this whole thing work. And you know, if we do it right, uh, with uh, SDN and some of the things we sh we've shown today with uh, Swarm and yeah. and uh, um, multi-host yeah. networking, then you could very simply then start saying, you know, uh, simple commands that allow you to deploy in a multi-host environment without really uh, trying to think about how to do the network. I mean, yes, there's still the details of building the mm -hmm. actual hardware and where it all connected. But from a developer point of view, you it's it's yeah, once kind it's of, built, then it's just performing. It, it's 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 there, and uh, you know, making very easy using very basic constructs that um, are available there in Linux to make it very um, easy for developers to use. Mariana Tessel from VP of Marketing here at Docker. Final question for you. Engineering, we, VP Engineering. What did I say, marketing? Marketing, Oh you my know? God, I can't believe I just said that. VP of Engineering, <laughs> getting late in the day. Day two, wall-to-wall <laughs> -wall coverage. You, you should be in marketing, you're really good on the queue. Um, first of all, engineering is marketing. That's the name. <laughs> marketing goes away in DevOps. <laughs> you know, it's just abstracted Yeah, away. it's all the it's same, <laughs> you know. It's, it's portable from engineering in a to community, marketing. Marketing fluff doesn't fly. I mean, yeah, exactly. frictionless communications of, of connected communities, uh, very efficient protocol, um, VP of Engineering at Docker, I got to ask you the culture question. What's it like at Docker? I mean, people want, they have this image, like the, man, it's magical castle of greatness at Docker. What's going on at Docker? What's the culture like? I mean, Solomon's a great guy, everyone seems to be like, you know, happy, smiling all the time, spring in their step. Is it like that inside, or people working away, having fun? Whistling while they work. What's what's it like in, inside Docker? Yeah, we Docker? come here every day, and like flowers are blooming. And, you know, it's just like, <laughs> like amazing. Just, like like a Disney promotion movie. every day. Salaries yeah. are being doubled. Uh, no, Valuations of a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, no, it's amazing. But what's the I engineering mean, culture? Seriously, like? I mean, we do have skeletons. You know, we do have like it's not all like you know singing every day, but you know it's it's so, so you know it's like, but it it is quite uh, it is quite amazing. I think in a few in a few. Um, ways in, in my point of view. Uh, one is, I think it's very rare to work in a technology that is so fundamental and so, um, you know, revo revolutionary, it kind of breaks and change how the industry does thing. It's just, it's just, I'm, I'm from. If you're an A player, it must be fun because, it, you know, it is, I mean, it's stressful, obviously. You got startup, right? I mean, it's not, how many employees you guys have now? In, uh, about in 100. In, in engineering, how In many? engineering, we have about, uh, what is that, about, 70, still, yeah. Still big team, but not massive, still kind of yeah, small yeah. startup. It's a, some yeah. startups are not easy, right? Yeah, But yeah. it seems like it's fun, there's a lot of technology. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of fun. I mean, I also want to say that we have uh, quite an international uh, team, 
and it just kind of the mix and, and, and different people come from like different uh, places but also from different companies so we have people came from consumer from enterprise and it kind of creates this very interesting different points of view open source uh, you know we have SaaS products on-prem products open source products so kind of this whole mix of a lot of things it's a melting going pot, on. diverse yeah. expertise. Yeah, it's very, very awesome. A lot of creativity, you talk to somebody and they have a consumer background and it, it just uh, feels. It uh, must be very interesting conversations. Very interesting. The debates must be very heated. Uh, Cultural and diverse. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, you know, we were, uh, there are debates, but they're not heated. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, pretty awesome. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. VP of Engineering, at Docker, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Okay, we're here live, covers the peek inside the, the machinery that is Docker in California, your diverse team, a very successful startup. Thanks so much for your time. We'll be right back with more after this short break.